Let's start with the very first basic question. Suppose an interviewer asks you, what is feature engineering? So what will be your answer? Think for a moment and you know, your mind may be going to all those big, big definitions on internet. But let me tell you one simple definition of what is feature engineering. Feature engineering, every time somebody asks you, immediately it should come to your mind. Everything that you do to make models life easy. I'm repeating it again, guys. Everything that you do to make models life easy. Now, how would you make models life easy? You will facilitate model to learn in a smooth way and better way. That is the process of model, right? That is the work of model to learn the pattern. So everything you do with columns or features in your data that makes the learning smoother, faster, easier. That is feature engineering. Okay. Now, under the umbrella of feature engineering, there are different, different things that we do. Sometimes some people may call data cleaning or outlet treatment also as feature engineering. Sometimes they may call it as a separate step of data science pipeline. Let's try to understand what is the main agenda of this video with a simple data. So the data you can see in front of you is a stored data. So in this data, you can see store ID. You can see city in which that store is located. You can see date of the, you know, date, one particular date. On that date, what is the revenue? Revenue, the last column is your target column and area is the area of that store. Okay. So this is the data in front of you. Now, let me ask you guys, at the moment you see this data with these five columns, what are the things that come to your mind? Just in the first look of this data, what are the things that come to your mind? I will tell you there are few things that will be coming to your mind. One is you will clean the data by, you know, missing value treatment or outlier treatment. Th those will apply on area and revenue column, last two columns. Okay. Revenue is target column. Let's keep it aside for some time. Area column. Okay. Then immediately it will come to your mind. I will remove my store ID. Why? Because that is ID that is not useful for my learning. Then it will be coming to your mind. I will encode the city column. Why you want to encode city column? Because this is a categorical column. Now I spoke about three things here, guys. Data cleaning, outlier treatment, encoding of categorical column and removing the IDs. All these I will put in the category of something known as obvious feature engineering. Okay. In this video, I'm not going to talk about obvious feature engineering. The reason for that is, you know that this is something you have to do. This is very basic of machine learning, right? Everybody who understand little bit of machine learning know these things need to be done. Where people face difficulty is non-obvious feature engineering. Now, why non-obvious feature engineering is difficult is it needs two things mainly. One is your domain understanding and other is common sense. Okay, common sense. Let's try to understand in the non-obvious feature engineering, what can we do and what is the purpose of doing non-obvious feature engineering? The non-obvious feature engineering is done to extract additional information from the data, which is not available by the first look of the data. By the first look of the data, some of the information is not available. As a data scientist, I want to extract those information. Hence, I'm a data scientist. Okay. And that is exactly what we are going to discuss how to think about it. Okay. So guys, let's come to date column. Okay. How a data scientist will think about this date column. I will derive five new columns from this date column now, and I will keep explaining you how data scientists thought process will go in deriving those columns. Okay. All these derivation, you will, you will, uh, you will notice that it's a combination of common sense plus domain knowledge. Okay. The first column that I'm going to derive from this date column is, so just to reiterate, what is the huge case? We have to take the uh, store data is there. We have to predict the revenue of a particular store based on these four, these three, four input columns. Okay. First thing that I'm going to derive from this date column is, is it a weekend? Why? Because from my domain knowledge or from my common sense, uh, I think being a weekend will be mole sales. So from the date column, First column I will derive is, is weekend. Second column I'm going to derive from this date column is from my domain knowledge and common sense. Okay, this data looks of 2020, 2021 and 2022. So is it a time of lockdown in that particular city? If it's a time of lockdown in that particular city, 
then I will make that flag variable as one else zero. I will get that logged on information from some government website or somewhere, but I will create a new column is logged down means this day uh, does this date fall in the lockdown that is my second column third column what i think is normally when people get salary you know during first week of the month many people will go and buy the monthly grocery for their houses okay many people may may get their salaries before 10th of the month or 5th of the month or in some cases let's say 12 13 of the month what i want to do i want to create a segregation of data where I say that okay this date is falling in first half of the month and this date is falling in second half of the month so I will create another column here I will call that is the date in first half of the month is it first half of the month I want to see if that is impacting the target column of or if that is impacting the revenue okay so I will create the third column saying is it first half of the month fourth column I am going to create here is is it kids holiday I will get kids holiday data from somewhere some school data or somewhere I will map it because if it's a kids holiday maybe they will take their parents to the store for some maybe games games shopping or maybe chocolates maybe dresses maybe swimming costumes maybe what not right so is it a kids holiday that I will fetch from the date map it to 1010 all these I am doing is I am extracting additional information from the raw data okay fifth column that i want to extract from this data is is it kind of government holiday government holiday means some kind of akshay tritya or let's say holi let's say diwali some kind of big big festivals right is it those kind of days obviously sales will go up on those days so five new columns i just derived from one column date column this is what i want you to think and this is um, you should you should focus your attention in these areas that from the raw data how can i derive something meaningful that will help my model learn better okay this is about the date column guys just i will give you two three more examples of how can you derive new things from area column and revenue column okay so one thing that you can do from the area column is i want to i want to create a flag variable if it is a large store or a small store because there is a possibility that uh, people may go to the large store in first half of the month for grocery and other things dmart kind of store if it is a small store maybe people are going there for their daily daily things right so maybe you are going to your nearby superstore small one for you know daily bread jam and butter and milk and eggs these kind of things right so i just want to put a segregation here is it a large store or is it a small store i have the area information here so i will go take the you know i will do the distribution analysis see where to put my boundary i will put a boundary saying this is a large store this is a small store okay then i'm going to create a new column called revenue per square feet so i have the area i have the revenue so i will create a new column revenue per square feet i don't know whether this column will help me in my analysis or not but from common sense looks like it may help me okay looks like that so guys if you see i have derived like eight nine new columns from existing just two three columns okay i have not touched the city column yet just two three columns i have derived eight nine new columns what i want you to be aware of is all these are non-obvious feature engineering as i told you in the beginning it is a combination of your domain knowledge plus common sense okay some people get frustrated when they don't get the idea of what features to derive i don't want you to get frustrated the reason for that is um, it may happen to anyone suppose you give me any pharma data now i may not be able to think on that pharma data you know how pharma industry works or what will make sense what will not make sense i may not be able to think that okay so some of you who is a fresher who has not worked in the industry for long don't get frustrated if you are not getting idea of deriving new features from your data it will come with the experience it will come with the time keep learning things keep focusing on the domain knowledge and you will get the ideas with the time okay so guys just to wrap up what i wanted to cover from this video is every time somebody says feature engineering remember everything you do under the umbrella to make models learning easy or models life easy there can be obvious feature engineering non-obvious feature engineering obvious is something that most of you know non-obvious is a combination of common sense plus domain 
which will come with experience with learning and most important don't get frustrated if you are not getting the ideas don't worry if you pay attention to a domain if you learn experience you know it will come with time okay so if you want me to create more such videos on different different types of feature engineering i can do that guys please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and drop me a comment saying you want me to create more videos on feature engineering okay i will see you all in the next video guys wherever you are stay safe and take care